Hello, 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 everyone. It is Throwback Thursday, and I am so excited. Um, we're opening another Barbie. Um, I think this one was made... It's going to take me a minute. Um... I think it was made in 2003. In 2003. Um, and it's a super, super cute, fun Barbie doll. Um, I remember I grew up with the Flintstones. I watched them a lot as a kid. Uh, there's four other Flintstone um, characters in this Kelly doll set. You can get Barney Rubble, Betty Rubble, Fred Flintstone, or Wilma Rubble. I like the design of the box. Um, Barney Rubble's pretty cool. He wasn't my favorite Flintstone character. My favorite Flintstone character growing up was um, Pebbles. Um, I was a, I was a huge Pebble fan. They actually have like some collector uh, Barbie dolls that are um like uh pretty cool looking um i was like googling so many flintstone um dolls to like prepare for this like they have a 2008 mattel flintstone betty and wilma and they're like the the big version they're like the barbie size um and they look really really cool um, and then I think I saw, like, Flintstones Barbie clothing fashion packs that were sold. Um, I saw a bunch of those as I was going through, like, images of Flintstone toys. And I think they even made Pebbles and Bam Bam later on. Um, just not at the same time as, like, these four, I don't think. Um, but I, I was excited because I grew up in, like, 19... The, the late 1990s. Um, and so I watched a lot of the 80s and 90s cartoons and like the early 2000s toys and things. Um, the Flintstones actually went on for like six seasons. It was like a sitcom kind of show. It started in the 1960s and it was kind of inspired. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of controversial as far as like what it, it inspired it because... Um, one of the creators of the, the, the Flintstones said that they were inspired a little by the Honeymooners, um, and, like, the, and they were influenced by, like, the Bickersons and Laurel and Hardy, um, and, and things like that. Um, however, it was contradicted by, um, somebody else, and I'm trying, I'm trying to find it in my notes, um, uh, do, 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 uh, according to Henry Gordon and a friend of, uh, uh, Gleason, uh, I guess Gleason's, who, uh, was actually thinking, uh, in, in a 1986 Playboy interview, Gleason and Alan Reed had done voiceovers for, like, Gleason in his early movies, and he had considered suing Hanna Barber for copying the Honeymooners, but let it pass. Um, according to Henry Gordon, a voice actor and a friend of Gleason's, um, he was told that he could probably have the Flintstones pulled right off the air. But they also told him, "Do you really want to be the guy that like yanked Fred Flintstones off the air?" I know I wouldn't. Um, so that was interesting. Um, so, William Hanna was honest about the inspiration, and he said, at the time, The Honeymooners was one of the most popular shows on the air, and he thought it was one of the funniest, and that the characters were really cool, and he said it influenced the Flintstones heavily, um, but uh, somebody else, Joseph Barbera, uh, disavowed these claims. He was like, no, in a separate interview he said I don't remember mentioning the honeymooners when I like sold the show but he would consider it a compliment if people compared the Flintstones to the honeymooners which I thought was also really really cool 
Now, the original voice actor for Fred Flintstone was Alan Reed. Pebbles Flintstone uh, was voiced by Gene Vanderpile. Uh, Barney Revel was b voiced by Dawes Butler and, and so on. Gene Vanderpile also voiced Wilma Flintstone. So, like, she has some range in her voice, I gotta say. Um, and I think Fred Flintstone might have also been ver voiced by, like, somebody else later on. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, because I, I could, I, it was a little difficult researching, um, to, to find out, um, because it, it mainly told me it was, um, Alan Reed that that voiced it and I was really looking uh, back and forth now the Flintstones was originally made to be more adult cartoon but that changed as they got like further into the series and I mean I'm somebody who I love old cartoons and shows like I grew up with Scooby-Doo the Jetson the Smurfs all of that fun stuff um, and so I was excited when I got Barney <laughs> Rubble here um, I wish I could have found the others as well the other four um they're made by Mattel um they're the Kelly doll versions um and so I'm excited to open this this bad boy up and I think I could save the box too um I find like older Barbies it's easier to kind of um to save the the, the box <laughs> it's kind of open them without ruining the box so much usually usually with newer Barbies, not so much. Like, I wish they would go back to these little twisty ties. Um, because that is just so much easier uh, for me to open. And it, it doesn't, like, damage the clothes as much as the little plastic kajinkers do. I don't know what they're called. But those little, little plastic things that hold the doll in place. Like, I want this. This experience of untwisting the, the plastic. Um, I like the, the box design. It looks like it has, like, it, it, it has, like, a little, um, sort of, uh, it looks like it has, like, a sort of, um, let me get the tape off this. Oops, I might have, it, it has, like, a little, um, like, window with, like, a little curtain. I think it's really, really cute. And then it also comes with this little cardboard thing that says the bedrocks times like it's supposed to look like a little newspaper it's just cardboard it's still cool i still really really like it um so i'm gonna put this back in the box because i'm gonna save the box and we'll take a look at barney and his outfit and everything i don't think this will be like a super long video um I'll, just because it is a kelly doll and um it's the only one i have uh really to do today um, I, I'm also pre-recording a lot, um, for, like, later months. Uh, like, I know I have plans in October, uh, y'all will be excited for, hopefully, of doing, like, a Monster High week in October, so I've been pre-recording for that, um, and whatnot. <laughs> um, so, woo, I've been pre-recording a lot. Now, the doll's hair, it is a 2003 doll that's been sitting in the box a little, it is very, very stiff. Um, but that's okay. Uh, he's got, like, little brownish eyes. His face is adorable. He's got on what looks to be, like, a little caveman dress with a little bow. He's so cute. Barney Rubble is so adorable as a, uh, as a Barbie. Like, I, I like that they, they took the Flintstones inspiration. Like, how cute is that? Um, and the Kelly dolls are great. I miss the Kelly dolls. Now they have Chelsea dolls. And it's not, like, the, the same feel to me as, like, I, I love them, but it doesn't feel the same as, like, the Kelly dolls. They also have, like, little younger versions um, of dolls younger than, than Kelly. Um, and I like those, too, but, like, they're not the Kelly dolls that I grew up with. It makes me feel very nostalgic. Um, I actually have a funny story for y'all. So my uncle, as a kid, um, apparently... They had Flintstones vitamins. I remember this because I used to have some too. But my uncle at 10 years old decided he was going to eat the whole bottle of Flintstones uh, vitamins. And they are toxic if eaten in that amount. And so my grandmother called poison control. 
And they're like, you need to go and get him this stuff so he'll throw up all the vitamins because he just eaten them. And so my grandmother did, and he threw up all the vitamins. And it's a story that my mother has told to me and whatnot that I will never forget. I don't know what he was thinking. I mean, they do taste really sweet and like candy. Do y'all remember the Flintstones vitamins? Let me let me just pull up a Google image for y'all because they were a huge part of my childhood. Like, I remember these things. Now, I can't eat a lot of vitamins uh, just because I have an iron sensitivity and I get really, like, flu-like sick. And my face gets puffy and red, so I get iron transfusions with uh, medication to help before uh, to prevent, like, the puffy puffy face and everything. Um, however, uh, I will say... Um, I do, I, I do think the Flintstones vitamins were pretty cool. So these are the Flintstones vitamins. They had like the gummy ones. Um, they had a bunch of them. Uh, I don't know if like they include iron. I remember taking ones that looked like this back in the day. Um, this photo here where they were like kind of chalky and sweet tasting. Uh, but my uncle ate the whole bottle. Like he did not leave one Flintstone unturned. Um, and I guess while I have this up, I'll show you some of the uh, Flintstone Barbies I was talking about. Because I might as well, while I have your attention. This is the, um, the, the Flintstones William and Betty set that I was talking about. I love the way Wilma looks in this and the way Betty looks. It is uh, quite expensive. I, I can't remember when they were made. But they are silver label dolls. Um, and they're very cute. Uh, they're in stock on Amazon, apparently, for $214.95. That is more than, that is, that's a good chunk of money, okay? Um, they did make a uh, silver label uh, uh, Bam Bam and Pebbles. Pebbles was my favorite. And then this is uh, another picture of the whole set that Barney came, that, you know, the whole, the whole, uh, dolls that include, uh, Barney here, um, you know, you see Barney over here, you can see Betty, you can see Wilma and Fred, um, they're all chilling, um, but, uh, yeah, they have a lot of really cool Flintstone, Flintstone toys, um, so I was very happy that I could, like, talk about, like, some of the history of the Flintstones, um, Um, the fact that it went on for six seasons, though, like, I'm, I, I feel like I shouldn't be as surprised as I am. Um, I remember, like, Fred Flintstone, he said, yabba dabba do the voice actor did, and I, I, it, it stuck in my head. Like, when I saw Barney, that's what I was thinking of, um, Barney Flintstone, um, not Barney the Purple Dinosaur. Uh, now, Fred and Wilma Winstone, Flintstone had this pet dinosaur called Dino um, and whatnot, uh, which I really, I, I liked. I like Dino. I, I would love to have a pet Dino. And they live in the town of uh, Bedrock, and it's supposed to be like, um, like a modern stone, like modern problems, but in a Stone Age era. So, like, um, it's set in the Stone Age with features and technology that resemble, like, mid-20th century uh, suburban United States. Um, and it, it's, I mean, they got a lot of inspiration. There are also other, like, prehistoric creatures uh, as portrayed as coexisting with cavemen, like saber-toothed cats and woolly mammoths that you would kind of expect in that era. Um, it, it, it just really was a cartoon that you'd watch and like, it would just, your imagination was there, you know? Um, I, I just, I'm so excited I get to talk to you all about Flintstone. Um, now, uh, do, 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 do. And I think that's kind of all I have to say. Uh, actually, I wanted to say something about the music because the Flintstones had some like catchy music. There was the closing credit themes was Meet the Flintstones. 
Um, this version was recorded with a 22-piece big band conducted by composer Hoyt Curtin and performed by the Randy Van Horn Singers, um, which I thought was really cool. And, like, the melody is derived from a certain section of Beethoven's piano, Son uh, at so, son at uh, I can't pronounce it um number 17 uh that was composed in the 1801 um so I thought that was really cool um the musical underscores were credited to her, her court curtain um for the show's first flat five seasons and then Ted Nichols took over in 1965 for the final season um, many episodes use like underscored that were composed for like Top Cats and the Jetsons. Um, and the last two seasons used the underscore for uh, of Johnny's Quest for the more like adventure stories. Um, now, uh, Hannah, one second, Hannah Bar, Hannah Barber. Hanna Barber was founded in July 7th, 1957. So this had to be like one of the earlier cartoons that they started making because, you know, three years later they made the Flintstones um, and uh, whatnot. And they were responsible for like a lot of other uh, cartoons. Like I think Scooby Doo at one point was created by like Hanna Barber. Um, like the older Scooby Doo uh, episodes and like Tom and Jerry. Like, there were a lot of good cartoons that started out with the Hanna-Barber. Um, so, that's exciting. But I would I would recommend this doll. I think he's cute. I think he's fun. I think he's cool, like, to put on display. I don't know, like, I don't mind his dress. Like, I don't know, maybe he's wearing a, you know, I like the dress. He is just a modern little dude in his dress. He's like, I don't care what people say. I don't need to wear pants. I'm going to let it all air out. Um, he's so adorable. I love him. And I can't wait to put him with my other Kelly dolls. Um, I love the way, like, some of his hair sticks up. I cannot believe how stiff the hair is, though. Um, but then again, it's been in the box for, like, 20, let's see, 21 years. Um, I, I feel like it's fair that the hair is kind of stiff. Um, his little uh like dress is made out of like a felt material uh, i'm not sure what material his little little bow is made out of um but it's cute and let me know what you think of fred flintstones and let me know if you watched the flintstones growing up um because i was like i said very excited to make this video and show y'all the flintstone barbie that i own it's, it just feels like going back to my childhood man um so let me know what you think. Bye, everyone.